says I'm live. Hopefully you guys can see me and hear me. I swear every time I do the the style, like I'm never really sure if it's gonna work and all that good stuff. Let's see. I think we're good. All right. Reading some comments. Looks like there's already quite a few people here. Rock the Watch was here. Let's see. Tennessee Mike, Celine Driver, Anonymous Watch Guy, Jeremy, Eric, Thumbs for Finger. Says he broke his ankle today at work, three months off. Ew, that's not how you want to take off work, but I guess that's one way to do it. Uh, wow, okay. Greg Woods here. Todd Whitehouse is here. Ken checking in from Pittsburgh. Dr. Bob's, Nate Dog, YZ80. I just got notification on my phone that I'm live. So that works. John checking in from hockey practice with the kids. Kevin's checking in from Florida. Mr. Brave Sailor's here. Um, so, yeah, Floyd Black Hat. I, well, I mean, my hair's not too bad, but. I don't know. I think it looks better on video, I guess. I don't know. Thanks, Mike. Says, uh, great video and story on the visitor. That that video didn't get a lot of views so far. Usually I get way more views. For some reason, that one's not getting views, but whatever. So what I'm going to do today, we have 47 people in. Um, what I want to do today is... We have like this week, uh, at the end of this week, if you're in the Chicago area, there is a Microlux show in Chicago. Now, I don't think I'm going to make it to that. Hello, Mr. Larry C. (laughs) And um, so I don't think I'm going to make it to that. But I also didn't think I was going to make it to the Warren and Wand wind-up show in Chicago, which is the week after that. So it'll be like April 28th, 29th, and 30th, right? And uh, it's so wild because, you know, I talk to a lot of people in the industry and everything. And I was talking to Mark at Long Island Watch, a.k.a. Islander Watch. And he hit me up the next day after talking to him saying I wasn't going to go because he was going to the San Francisco show and um he uh he offered to pay well i mean it's not like mark is but like it kind of was it was like islander watch offered to sponsor my trip to san francisco wind-up show and i legit wasn't going to be able to go just because i didn't have the uh money for the um the trip so i said why not? I want to go. You know, I like Islander watches. I've known Mark for a long time. Let's do it. So he did it. Big thanks to Mark for doing that and Islander watch. So that is how I'm able to go to the wind-up show in San Francisco this year. So um, I'm going to actually have Mark on the show. I think he's going to maybe chime in at about 845. And we'll just, we'll just do a quick chat. Probably, you know, not about what I just said because I just told you. Um, and, you know, maybe I'll talk about it again later towards the end when, because I'm going to cover what I want to do. I want to cover all of the, or most of the brands that are going to be at the wind-up show. And I'm going to share the screen and we're going to look at some of the watches and everything that's going to be there. So I'm pretty excited about that. So uh, Floridian is checking out Exquisite in Naples. Yes. Um, Floridian, hit me up for sure. Uh, I'll make sure they know you're coming and uh, hopefully you can meet up with Nick. He's my main contact there, but there's, you know, quite a few good salespeople there for sure. But um, 
yeah, definitely tell him I sent you. So maybe maybe we can get on the phone. We'll FaceTime, and I'll uh, I'll help you pick out a watch so he can buy it. That'd be pretty fun. Celine Driver says, so we're going to see a random Rob uh, Islander watch collab? Hmm. Maybe. I mean, Islander watch has done that with like Urban Gentry or something. I don't want to step in any toes or anything. I know that relationship is much stronger than mine is, but like, I also know that he's diverse within the community and stuff like that. So uh, I'm not opposed to doing something at that level. Bean Boy said he just put on his Islander when I heard Mark was going to be on the show. I am oddly not wearing the Islander, but you'll I'll explain why I'm not wearing it uh, or why I'm wearing what I am wearing instead of that. Um, Ginger Down Under says, hey, Rob, now in a word that I can't pronounce, Victoria, about 300 kilometers from Melbourne. Uh, that is awesome. You're still on your trip. That is awesome. You're living the dream, brother. Raj checking in from UK. CFZ, you are a terrible enabler. Um, yeah, I do, I do my best. Dane says the world needs a random Rob Islander collab. Um, yeah, baby steps. We'll see how it goes. Uh, let's see. All right. Let's, before, before Mark gets on the show, and I don't want to waste too much time just babbling, still going. Two weeks to home. Wow. That is an epic trip, man. Epic trip. Maybe one day I will do that as well. Um, Calico says, wow, will you and Mark be around for a drink at the hotel? Um, I haven't talked to Mark about what he's doing after the show, but, and I honestly, I don't know, like, if he even drinks or if he, like, what he does or if he's going to be busy doing something else or whatever like that. So, I'll, like, I'll, I'll ask. For sure. I mean, I love hanging out after the show or, you know, if you're, uh, if you're up for it, even before the show, because that's how we roll sometimes at these shows. So let's share the screen. If I can remember how to do it, we're going to go boom like that. Okay. So this is, <laughs> you know what? I got to highlight this. I, I can't control what people say. Brave Sailor, he's a wild card. He's going to say what he's going to do. Uh, I'm not even going to tell you what Brave Sailor did before the show, and I was chatting with him. So you do you, brother. I don't, I don't, cont like, wild card. I, I'm looking forward to seeing you at the wind-up show, uh, Daniel, for sure. Um, okay. <laughs> Reading some of the comments. All right, let's move on to the, to the, uh, Whoa, to the wind up show. If you don't know, most of you guys that are in the chat already are, well, there's 87, 85 people, people are leaving, whatever. Um, the people that are watching, if you don't know, San Francisco wind up show at the end of this month. So, like next week, not this week, but next week. If you're anywhere near, I say if you're six, eight hour drive, maybe away, and you're, if you're into watches enough to be watching this channel right now, watching me. Why would you not make that drive? Come up, check out a bunch of really cool micro brands, hang out with a bunch of really cool watch people, and uh, have a good time. So that's my plea to you. I think you should definitely do that. So in the roster, you can see here, lead sponsors, Accutron, Christopher Ward, Fortis, Oris, Zodiac. I have, well, I have two of those five. I have a Fortis and a Zodiac. I have a few of Zodiac. And I'll probably add some more of those. You know, at some point, hopefully I'll own at least one watch of most of these brands. Um, okay. So Alpina, I think I want to focus on the smaller, more approachable brands. I don't want to say Alpina is not approachable. And I actually even have one here. Mimo out in Long, uh, Long Beach, California sells them. So great watch. But I want to focus more on the... the um, more stricter to the word micro brand watches that you're really only going to see at these shows. Not so much like you can see an Alpina or Bulova or Citizen, uh, Young Hands or G-Shock. You, you can see some of these watches at 
authorized dealers and stuff. So I don't really want to focus on those too much. I want to look at the other options. So let's look at the full brand roster. And some of these I straight up don't know anything about. So a a big a bing done. I don't even know if that's right, but um, ADPT. That's at th this is a you know Warner Baum uh, brand, I believe, or they're associated with them somehow. Um, let's see, James Duffy says he's not sure if he'll. How are you not going to be available, James Duffy? Make yourself available and take me to the bar for a drink. Actually, we don't even go to the bars for drinks. We just we bring the bar to us. So look, let's look at, uh, for example, I'm going to skip ahead, guys. We're going to look at Aster Banks. So we can go and visit Aster Banks. Beautiful colors. Uh, the, the owner of this brand is out of Chicago. And he's got some really cool models. Great loom. He also does the Soul Labs. So if we go to shop, we can see here all the colors from the Fortitude Light series. Looks like they're all in the 650 range. If you go to these shows, James says he's three years sober, but I'll buy a round if I can make it. We don't have to drink either. It's not a big deal. Um, sea Ranger. So looks like the Fortitude Light is pretty much what he has right now. So we will um, we'll move on from Astor Banks. Um, actually, Ben Ross is on the screen. We can look at Ben Ross real quick. So here is Ben Ross. I I don't think I've videoed a Ben Ross. Looks like good clean watches. That's like a field style one. Thin. Five ninety five. I know they have dive watches too. There's the Orbit. Oh, okay, here's all the watches. So they have the Orbit. Very good looking watch. Okay, so watch addiction says the Orbit robot. Let's look at that one. Very um, familiar case shape that looks a lot like you'd see uh, even like that Synchron I had recently, which I sold. Very similar case shape. Clean design. Looks pretty good. How much is it? Nine ninety five. It must have. And Ben Ross has been around a long time too, as far as micro brands go. They've been around a long time. All right, let's get out of. Okay, let's get out of Astro Banks. We did. Let's go to Autodroma. This is a brand that. I really want one of these, but they just, they're on the smaller side. But these new digital ones are really cool. I know a lot of people were gaga over those when they first came out. I don't know if they still are or not, but pretty dang cool looking digital watches that they offer. Rob, do you take collect calls for live? Uh, you, you can try. So they have a chronograph there. And then I really like these ones because they kind of look like um, a tachometer, like that you would see on a car, right? Where it's revving out and then it hits the red line. They're very automotive inspired, racing inspired and everything. So I think they're very cool. Um, actually, let's look, at, let's look at this one. I like the strap that's on this one as well. 695, uh, automatic Miyota movement. And there's, like I said, there'll be show specials with a lot of these brands. So those are pretty dang cool. I'm digging those. So maybe an autodroma in the future. That's a 40 mil, but it doesn't have, it's completely round. So it doesn't have like a lug to lug. I'll have to try that on. That's what's really cool about these shows. You know, you can try these things on and, and check them out. So, so that's a quick look at autodroma. Baltic is a fan favorite for sure. I have one Baltic. So that looks like they have a new model available coming soon is the bronze. And there's the classic, which I think is what I have. 
There's the Aquascape Dual Crown. The MR01 is a very clean classic look to it. There's kind of like a sector dial one. I'm very tempted by this titanium one as well. It's, I think, a little bit larger. They have a GMT out now. Of course, the Bi Compax Chronograph. And then the Tri, so it has three subdials. So some great options from Baltic. Decent price points, I think. Like most people are going to be gravitating probably towards this classic one. It's a nice size. Yeah, I think this is the one I have. So it looks like 580 euro. What is that, euro? Whatever that converts to US dollars, around $600. Ooh, they even have a white dial. That would make it look like a little bit larger watch. So great option from Baltic. And if we go, there's Ben Ross, Best Bespoke Watch Projects. See, some of these I'm not familiar with. That's pretty wild looking. So it's, oh, it's a Swedish brand. We can check those out. Okay, here's Mark. So let me get Mark on here. We'll have Mark join in. Are you guys ready for Mark? Let me uh, bring, bring this up, and then we can add Mark to the stream. Here's Mark. Can you hear it? I hear. Do you hear me? I hear you fine, Mark. Thanks for joining Wow, I, I figured it out. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So I was just covering with everybody. There's like 104 people watching. A lot of activity in the chat as well. But uh, I was just kind of covering. I was doing the share screen. So I was showing on the uh, Worn and Wound wind-up roster. And I was just kind of going through it alphabetically and clicking on with a heavy focus on the micro brands Because I, that's what I love about the shows. Of course, we can go into a lot of different shops and we can see an Accutron or Alpina. Right. Some of these bigger brands, I don't want to dismiss them. But that's not why I go to the shows. I go to the shows to see the Correct. that I, I can't see anywhere else. Absolutely. No, 100%. That's why, that's why I'm there as well. Just to, because people can't see this stuff. It's not stuff that's in any store anywhere. So you got to go there to see everything. Yes. Oh, so I'm, I'm assuming people are going to want to know what watch, or in your case, probably watches you are wearing. Could you please indulge? <laughs> Uh, let's see. I'm wearing an ISL 18 on the left and actually put this on over the weekend. It's my uh, pre-ceramic Submariner. Ooh. So it's been at it. Wow. So it's, it's seeing its second or third day on my wrist, which is kind of rare, <laughs> but yeah, generally it's two it's, Islanders, but it's not today. Yeah. Well, sometimes I, I've, I've owned Rolex in the past. I've sold them. But I, I do know that um, some of those watches fit so well that they just kind of remain on your wrist for a while. So. Yeah, no, it's super comfy. And, and you know, I didn't even I, I was into watches back then. Obviously, I was still I was selling them at the time. But this is from 2006. So I didn't really know what I kind of what I had until probably about a decade later. Yeah. Well, they, and it might not have been like the hype on it now versus no no i walked i i walked into a store and purchased it if you could imagine that yeah i think those days will come back i really yeah, eventually i think so i agree with I'm, you i'm I, not interested sooner. in it anymore though <laughs> no um, i hear you i hear you so i gotta say i didn't tell anybody what i was wearing but i'm actually wearing my srp 309 the orange oh, cool kind of the iconic watch with my channel and i was um, it's not the watch I wore all day today, but I put it on cause I knew that you were going to be on the show and yeah, I could have put an Islander on, but that's a little cliche. Um, I did this because I was feeling a little nostalgia, nostalgia because I've known you for a long time. Um, I've, I've talked to you, you know, for years, uh, on and off. Um, and it's just where this hobby has gone for me and what it's done for me and a lot of people I know is uh is has been a very positive highlight in my life and you and for your store like mm -hmm. you used to sell these back in the day for like crazy crazy affordable and that was yeah and now there's like that void in the market and your timing of developing the islander watch was like right perfect because seiko you know revamped their uh yep. structure raised their prices yep. Uh, yeah, pushed out the the Japanese, um, you know, yeah, pretty much watches out of the U.S. Yep. market. 
So there was yeah. a massive void. And here comes Islander watch like, okay, here you go. Yeah. Oh, I love that watch. I, I have one of those. <laughs> I have the exact watch. <laughs> yeah. had, had it for a while. So, um, wind up San Francisco. I, I met you in person at the wind up show last year in New York. Yeah. October. Obvious, obvious one for you to go to and have a booth because you're right there. Right. Yeah. It was, I wasn't even, I wasn't going to. And then one of the guys that worked for me was like, you got to do it. You're right here. And I was like, ah, I don't want to, I don't want to get everything together. I'll get all the accoutrement that goes along with it. And I said, if you handle it, I'll, I'll do it. And he handled it. And it was, I would say it was a very good success. Uh, and so successful that I'm doing San Fran, Chicago, and then New York again. You're doing the trifecta. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's awesome. You're traveling all the way across the United States to San Francisco. So the West coast guys can get hands on with the Islander watches. I think that's going to yes. be exciting. The San Francisco show has a completely different vibe than the New York okay. show. Cause okay. I did all three last year and I, I think you'll really enjoy it. You'll have a good time. No, I'm really looking forward to it. Ironically, I was in LA like a week and a half ago. <laughs> so I'm flying back again for this. So uh, now I'm really looking forward to things. It's going to be a lot of fun. The New York show was a total blast. Like time flew. Uh, three days went by like that. So I think it'll be a lot of fun. Now, I know people are going to, like I've already read a couple of comments. Uh, people are hoping you'll bring a little bit of inventory to sell. I don't think you're going to on this one. Nah, I can't because just the logistics. You know, last year when we were in New York, we were showing, I think, 57 to 60 SKUs. And then if you imagine you want to have a few of each. So, you know, taking 300 watches in a car from Long Island to Manhattan, parking outside and unloading it is fine. Putting it on a plane getting it out there, transporting it, totally different animal. So what we're going to do is everything there is going to be uh, display models. I mean, you know, real, not like Rolex display models, the functioning watches, play with them, try them on whatever. And then uh, there'll be a card on the table. You can pick it up and uh, there'll be a coupon on it that'll expire like a couple of days after the show. Uh, so it's kind of like the, uh, um, the, the, it gives you the impetus, I guess, to purchase or, you know, kind of sorry we don't have the inventory here, but you can still purchase it. And, and here's a little token for you. Nice, nice. And then maybe, yeah. maybe like late Sunday at the end of the show, you could sell the, so you don't bring any back. Yeah, but that would be actually pretty cool. Um, yeah, more than likely, you know, kind of get rid of stuff that we have. But I mean, even stuff that we don't get rid of. Uh, it just goes back and it goes into a certain sample bin. And then if somebody with a channel wants to review something, we just send it to them, review it. And we just ask that you send it back. So that's how we, you know, we kind of already had three quarters of these watches already because they're all review samples. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'd, I'd like to see all of them, I guess. So we'll, you we'll, will. We'll, talk about, you will. we'll talk about that later. No, I mean, yeah, your, bo your box is in the mail. <laughs> So also, um, I mentioned it at the beginning of the live stream, but I have to say again to you, uh, thanks for, um, you know, taking care of me, getting me out there. You're, you, you've sponsored my journey out there. So otherwise, I wasn't going to go. So Yeah, I know. When, 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 when you told me, day. when you told me you weren't going, I was like, oh, man, he's not going. And then I don't know why. I'm just like, well, he should go. He's got to go. So I talked to my marketing guy. I'm like, what do you think? Should I, should I offer to pay for his trip? And he's like, of course, he's like, because you do so much, whether you know it or not, you do a ton for the store. Um, so I was like, yeah, so let's just do it. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. And go do your thing and, you know, have fun and just spread the word. Oh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a ball. I, I usually just make my rounds. I keep going around. And then, yeah, um, the one thing that's happened and you probably experienced it because you're, you're you have a big YouTube channel as well. On top mm -hmm. of the fact that you were already popular just from selling everybody great watches right <laughs> you, you experienced at the show like whether they even bought a watch from you or not they wanted to like yeah. take a picture with you talk to you it's like that was it weird yeah. celebrity status that you just yeah you're like wait i'm just a guy yeah just mi microcosm celebrity yeah. status you walk outside you're nobody you walk inside you're somebody exactly exactly so it's it's exciting to be uh, in that environment i guess yeah i'm looking forward to it it'll be good it'll be good. just a week and a half away yeah.
it'll, yeah, it'll be here real quick. <laughs> I was trying yeah. to decide because there's so many shows coming up. I was I was originally maybe gonna just drive down. There's a Microlux show this weekend. Yeah, the, this weekend, right? Yeah, I was yeah. invited to that. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it because I'm doing wind up, and then um, the week after that, I'm going to Long Island. Or, not long island. I'm going to uh, Rhode Island for okay. a, a, a different authorized dealer and stuff. So it's a lot of travel. Got it. So, busy, busy. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, it just happens. So um, you have a new a new model coming out. Yes. You're going to release that at the show. So there is – so probably – so the show starts on Friday – the Tuesday before we'll drop three new Manhasset colors. Um, so they'll be at the show. And then the week probably after the show or the week after that, we're going to be debuting um, a 41 millimeter Brookville, which is kind of like the, it's a 9015 base dress watch. So people have been asking for a larger version. Uh, so there's going to be four new color, four colors of that. Those will be at the show so people can see them and then they'll be available for purchase like, like a week and change later. You know, I used to think uh, Elshin from Zelos put out mm -hmm. a lot of different models and a lot of different colors. Uh, I think you might have him beat. I don't know how he's got nothing. He's it. got nothing on me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you do it. It's like relentless. It's just like new model, new colors, new model, new colors. It's yeah. It's it's a combination of both, right? It's it's the new colors, so you know colors sell out. So, so you know, kind of make the decision. Sure. In the beginning, it was easy. When you only had three models, it was easy. Yeah, bring back. But then when you're up to you know 200 and change models, it's you know what do you retire? What do you bring back? Um, yeah, if I we've got a roadmap out, it, it probably goes at this point. I'm probably covered till the end of the summer to maybe release a new watch every two weeks. That is insane. Yeah, no, it's there's a lot going on. You know, is once the once the um, NH34 came out. Um, that kind of just like opened us up to just do a whole bunch of GMTs and some other stuff. So there's a lot of good stuff coming. Right. And then you have, um, well, at least the, the urban gentry limited edition. I don't know if you do any other collabs, but then you sprinkle in a couple little special yeah. ones on top of that. Sprinkle in some special ones. You know, we did, I, it all started with a uh, loom shot uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, I did it. I did it with, uh, with him. Eric. Um, yep. Yeah, Eric. Yep. I did done the TGV. I did something with Marvin from Hemel. Um, yeah, it just kind of keeps going. And the, you know, TGV hopefully will be a yearly thing where we're working on something right now to get it out for the end of this year. So we'll see. Keep it going. Keep it going. Do you uh, a little off topic? Um, yeah, sure. And, uh, uh, I guess a little. Whatever. I'll, I'll just ask it. Do you Go. drink at all or no? Alcohol? Nope. No? Okay. Nope. Not as a religious thing or not as anything. I just... Uh, water. <laughs> water, seltzer, coffee. Yeah. Um, but yeah. No, I don't do alcohol. I never... I have, no, I have no vices other than work, which is kind of unfortunate in some, in some respects. Yeah. Um, well... That, uh, that keeps you busy. Your alcohol is just going to limit you anyway. But, and I've cut way back, but I know like a lot of times uh, after the show and stuff, uh, myself and a few other like friends and everything will meet up and we'll have a few drinks and just shoot the shit and everything. So, oh, if you, hey, if you want to hang or whatever, we'll talk at the show and figure something out because uh, I don't know. My dance card isn't very full. Oh, then yeah, we'll fill it. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get you busy if you're not going to be busy because literally. Great. And I don't know if you did it in New York, but like there's always these little meetups with other yeah. brands and everything. They yeah. Network. Yeah. I kind of, you know, because I'm in, because I was in New York and because it's just easy for me uh, every night show ended, literally hopped in my car, drove to the office, unloaded watches, drove home, had dinner, went to sleep, rinse and repeat, do it again the next day. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, if I'm there, if I'm gone, I'm, if I'm out, I'm out. So I'll, you know, you know do whatever. Right. Yeah. You got nothing else to do, right? You're stuck out. Cor on the correct. Coast. <laughs> correct. Correct. And you're not taking There's... your family on this one. No, no, they were not. They, they were just in LA, you know, two weeks ago. So they, they'll be home. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Well, hopefully you get everything sorted out. And uh, I mean, I, I know you 
it's it's going to be a ton of work to just even logistically to pack up and every, I don't know how you do it. Like they just go in well, cases and they just go I, on the plane with you. I don't, I, someone else is doing it. Ryan's doing it. I test him with all of it. So there's suit, literally open suitcases on the floor of my office and he's built up the whole show next to my desk. Um, we'll photograph it, everything. Cause unfortunately he can't make it. He's got a family vacation that he's got to go to. Um, and then he's breaking it down. I'm just going to pack it all. And then okay. I'll get it there. And I, I'm bringing in another guy with me. Uh, Clinton's coming with me and uh, we will set it all back up again. Should be, so it should be pretty you, smooth. It'll we be mean, uh, mean only, uh, mean only one other person, which if you remember the New York show, three was like, even three, we were inundated. So we'll, two will be interesting, but we'll, you know, whatever. It'll keep us on our toes. Yeah, you're going to be busy, but you're not going to be selling them. So, Correct. So like part of it is going to be removed. So I think you'll. Right. That was a big thing. Like, hey, give me your credit card and probably writing stuff down and taking notes that we won't need. So that's kind of that's kind of cool. Right. I'll be I'll be free. Who knows? Maybe, maybe I'll hang out at the booth for a little bit, too. You're more than welcome. You are celebrity status as well. Yeah, I did miss. Um, I've always kind of been interested in meeting i don't know it's just again one of those things because i'm a fan too just just like other people you know are you know look to me for influence or whatever but um mm -hmm. i thought it would have been cool to meet tristano but oh, yeah yeah you, you were out you were out already right yeah he showed up on sunday so yeah yeah he, he told me he was coming you know he'll be there and i was like okay and then it was like you could kind of, if you could see an aerial view, it was like a magnet was walking through the crowd, and it was just <laughs> as the magnet oh, moved, shoot. all the people, all the people moved with them. But yeah, oh, okay, yeah. poor guy. So that, that gets a little nuts, yeah, because he's big time. He's he's big time, yeah. He is he is big time. He is certainly is makes makes me look like very small fries. So what I I think what I would do in that circumstance, rather than trying to meet Tristano is there would be a huge void at all the booths as everybody is that's when you go through them. exactly yeah yeah exactly it's like pre it's like it's like press hour <laughs> yeah. i do that now at the shows anyway i just kind of look around i'm like wow there's nobody over there i'm going over there yeah it's always a good thing to do because it doesn't make a difference when you're there right just as long as you're there yeah yeah absolutely that's awesome oh. well i appreciate you coming on i don't know if you got thank you if you want to say yeah. anything to the, pe the people give them some oh hey yeah, no, I don't have any inspiration. Um, if you're coming out to San Francisco, love to see people, love, love to meet people, come on by. Even if you've never bought anything, it doesn't matter. You want to look at stuff, great. Want to say hi, say hi. I mean, there were people that emailed me after the New York show and said, I came to the booth and I was too nervous to say hi to you. But I, you know, I love your videos. And I was like, ha, I'm not... <laughs> It's just me. <laughs> say hi if you want to say hi. It's all good. And uh, and if you can't make it, we'll be in Chicago. If you can't make that, we'll be in New York. And uh, yeah, uh, all, all good. And just uh, have fun. Love the hobby. Buy what you want, not what people tell you to buy. That's my biggest 100%, thing. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's, that's why That's why you have 200 different uh, SKUs, right? Yeah, Ho something for everybody. Hopefully, hopefully you at least have something that somebody wants. If you don't, if you don't have one yet, you'll have one one day. For sure. That's your goal. I got it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Cool. Well, I appreciate it, Mark. I think so. Uh, no problem. Thanks for taking the time to join the live stream and I'm going to get back to reviewing. Yeah, no, thank uh, you. I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you in uh, about a week and a half. All right. I'll see you soon. Thanks. Be good. Take care. Bye. Wow. That was pretty cool to have Mark on there. Um, all right. All right, I, I was reading some of the comments. Some of you guys are pretty funny, but uh, Celine Driver says, got to meet Tennessee Mike too. I've met Mike and I know a lot of you also want to meet Mike that are in my private group and everything. Uh, maybe one day we'll uh, sucker him into going to a meetup or something. That would be really cool. Okay, let's uh, find Mabel Jewelry says, I'll be in San Francisco. I'll reach out. Please do. That's awesome. Um, Cal Calico says, all right, Mark's gone. Time to log off. Um, oh, oh, okay. Uh, final names also says he, uh, I'd like to meet Jeff McMahon. 
you might have the opportunity to do that maybe in August if you are near the Long Beach area. He's met up with me a couple of times now at my MIMO meetup. And I think I'm going to open that up a little bit so more people can to uh, come in. But yeah, 100%. Jeff McMahon in the person is exactly what you see in video. He can be very intense, but he's uh, very approachable and very easy to have a conversation with. Very intelligent man. Um, let's see. What new Islander. It's, uh, I, I can't keep track of all his models. Um, I will show it because uh, I'll be wearing one of the new ones at the show. So I'll post up a picture of it, Paul. You'll see it on my YouTube channel for sure or Instagram. So <laughs> Calico says Jeff is uh, scary, tall, and intimidating. That's slightly accurate, but uh, he's very approachable. He's fine. Okay. Um, let's go back to looking at some other watches, okay? Is there anything you guys really want to see on here? Uh, brew watches. I'm a huge fan of brew watches. I currently don't own one. I'd like to add another one. There's always too many watches. I did order this retro, and I ended up selling it. It's actually sold out that colorway. I think I want to go to this style more. I really like this particular one. And when I see these, this is what I think with brew. Uh, let's see here. I did own, not the Technicolor. I think he still has some of these. I did own this one, the 8 bit. And I think I like that one the most. As weird as it is, because it is funky, but it's just got that vibe. You know, I grew up with like 8 bit video games and stuff like that. So that one just kind of resonates with me. It's funky. Uh, I really dig it. I'm probably going to add one of those. I'll probably end up buying a few watches at the show. I know I'm at least buying one or two. Um, <laughs> but uh, who knows? Who knows? All right, let's go back. That's Brew Watches, Boulevard, to Chris Ford, Citizen Collective. I don't know what some of these are. That's funky. Let's take a look at it. I don't know anything about this. Um, okay, so this is, okay, here we go, new watches. I was like, yeah, I want to see some watches. Okay, so they do some pretty funky watches. That one's already sold out. So that's probably, yeah, it's using Fordite, which is like layered paint peeled off an old paint booth at the Ford um, assembly plants. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. There's like this weird, um, Yikes, those are $39.50. I don't think I'll be walking away with one of these. Those are a little pricey. So we're going to bump out of that. Um, I got scared away. Okay, let's look at, uh, I want to look at Fairer. Fairer's actually got some new cool stuff out. And I haven't had a Fairer on the channel in a long time. We are looking, at, we are in the United States. But Fairer does great colors. Look at those colors. Love that color. That the thing moved on me. Okay, we're gonna go to watches. We don't care about that. Look at the colors they use. I love the white dial ones with all the extra colors. So GMT bezel automatic. You got that extra. You got that fourth hand on there for extra color. I'm digging that. Fourteen ninety. That's that's getting up there in price, right? But fares weren't cheap to begin with. I am digging this watch. I'm going to have to play, play with one of those. And... Hmm. We'll have to probably start a list and see what watches I can solicit. Because I'm not going to buy them all, but I could solicit some of these brands to get the watches on the channel if you guys want to see it, right? So um, let's see. The Fortis new green dials, those are really cool looking. Uh, I have not checked out the newer ones. There's Fears. Here's Formex. Formex is a champ. Can't find. So there's something wrong with that. 
It's probably just the link that's on there. I'll have to let Formex know to get a hold of wind up. I'll text Marcus after the show. Um, here's Fortis. Yeah, they so they have blue, they have green dial. They uh, really expanded their colorways, and they have that. Yeah, the, the main thing is they expanded their colorways, right? So look at watches. That green is cool looking. Yeah, it's a very interesting green. I'd like to get some good pictures and video of this green to see how it looks versus uh, how the, you know, because these are renders. These aren't like actual pictures. So oftentimes they don't really depict exactly what the watch looks like. But these are pricey, $2,300. It's not cheap, but you're getting a lot of watch for the money for sure. Um, they even have it in the chronographs too. So there's the blue and the green are the main new ones. And then, of course, they have their diver line, too. James says he likes this new iteration much more than the previous. Um, what is this brand? The young Swiss-based company brand that is inspired um, artists from the Middle East. So if you're into vintage-looking chronographs, this might be an option. And that's not going to work. So some of these links aren't working very good. What is this? So there's a knife company there. That's pretty cool if you're into knives. Grant Stone. Shoes, I guess. Now we're doing lifestyle and stuff. We're doing shoes. Of course, Islander's there. We're going to do Islander last, but we're going to do it soon. Jack Mason's going to be there. Their GMT, their new release with a 9075 movement. Awesome. I did a video on it. So they will be there. James Brand offers like accessories and stuff. Actually, I have one of his, um, this is what I use for opening all the boxes. It's a James like kind of utility knife. Very cool. Uh, Young Hands, Laco, Laurier. I know Laurier is uh, very popular in the micro brand world. Smaller sized watches, whether it's the kind of like a sport watch, dive watch, or the chronograph. Great options, affordable price points. Now they have a GMT, it looks like, too. And how much is this thing? Did I scroll past the point the price? Where's the price? Why do I not see the price? Oh, right here, duh. It's all the way on the bottom. $7.99. $7.99, not bad for uh, a pretty cool looking GMT. All right, let's, let's keep rolling because we're going to run out of time. Yeah, we're going to run out of time. I want to try to show as many as I can. $7.99, thank you, Anonymous. Let's see, that's Laurier, Lejour. So it's many tiny pieces, man. Pretty good looking watch. See what these look like. Pretty sharp angular chronograph there. That's pretty cool. 1580. And it is an automatic, probably using a Valju, or I could be wrong on that, but I could be right. So these are pretty cool. I don't think I've ever videoed any of these. And they have bronze. So we'll have to check those out. And uh, main, this is uh, another really good popular one with the micro brands because they're again on the smaller side for most of their watches. So like 38 millimeter GMT, that's awesome. You know, they have that, that kind of crazy looking one there. But check this out. Like, I think they're pretty dang affordable too, if I remember right. Uh, that's on pre-order GMT. Great loom. Bracelet looks good. I mean, that's, I don't think that's an actual photo, but that rendering looks really good. Uh, $7.99 euro, whatever that converts to in the US. That's a solid looking watch, guys. That might be a good one to look out. If you, if you like the smaller, like 38 mil, that could be a really good option for you right there. And Maurice Lacroix, Nice Momentum, Manta. Monto is always putting out some quality watches for sure. 
you know, a little more expensive than some of the, you know, micro brands, but they're like a premium micro brand, if that makes sense. Nevada Grinchin. They're like a revival or survival brand, whatever you want to call them. Nate Dog says Monta's worth the hype. I agree. Monta is worth the hype. Nevada Gretchen. Um, you know what? I've had a little side story. Nev- Nevada Gretchen was supposed to send me a watch. They sent it. This is like a little side thing. And it's not a dig on Nevada, although it is a little bit. And I'm going to tell them this when I go to the show. Because they're emailing me back and forth, is they're terrible with it, right? Um, on top of the fact that both them and I had another company send me some watches via FedEx, and FedEx wanted way more credentials from me than I was willing to provide, and they basically wanted to label me based on our um, what do you call it um, customs. They wanted to label me as a importer i'm like i'm not an importer i'm an individual i'm like i'm not willing to give you that information so i've never gotten the watch excuse me and they've sent it like three times now and it just goes back to them so pretty terrible experience with that so far so if you're ordering a nevada grinchin hopefully that's not happening to you but i suspect it might be notice watches west cullen and i think they got at least one more person in on the show you know, helping them out as they like, you know, level up. Um, so they, they need the help. So uh, they have a solid lineup. Obviously the, the green bronze Avalon two is the, the one watch that I have. Uh, that's not true. I have more than that one, but um, that one is awesome. I absolutely love that. That's actually the watch that I bought from San Francisco wind up last year was that green Avalon. And then my buddy Calico, Bought the blue one, but he sold it like a dummy. I don't know why he did that. Uh, yeah, so those are really cool. The other one I have, oh, I have a one-to-one now, too. They do what's called a vault edition of watches. I don't know if they're still doing it or not, but I do have a retrospect. And then I have the, let's see if I can find it. This one's super cool. The, the Sector Deep. Oh, it's not even on here. Hmm. I don't know why it's not on here. Anyway, it's a Destro left-hand drive one. It's pretty cool. Yeah. What? Uh, um, yeah. What you said. I'm not an importer. They legit wanted to label me as an importer. I am the co-signing. Our customs with getting watches and everything right now is so screwed up. It is. It is terrible. And I'm not going to take part in it. So I, both times with both brands, I said, just fine, send it back. I don't want it. So uh, Norcane's going to be there. Oris is going to be there. Uh, Oris usually has a very large display. Um, don't have deal with import tax. What are you saying, Mark? Oops. Mark says they probably want you labeled as an importer so they don't have to deal with import tax, et cetera. I don't know. They didn't do a very good job explaining it. I actually did fill out the form once and then they said it was wrong. So I, I gave up. I got I got pissed off and just gave up. So uh, Serica is going to be there. I know there were some problems with their movements in the past or the way the crown worked or something. Hopefully they fix that. Uh, Solabs, these are very cool looking fun watches. Hopefully I'll get one um, on the show someday. Soul Labs is uh, owned by the same owner of uh, Astor Banks. Spinnaker. I don't know what this brand is. Standard H is a brand of apparel and accessories for car watch, car and watch enthusiasts. So I'll check them out. I'm a car enthusiast. Stella is going to be there. I haven't worked with them in a long time, but they have a solid built watch. Very fun. Very cool. Uh, Studio Underdog, very colorful watches, and in, I forget what show I was at, where Studio Underdog was there, and they're giving away posters, posters that match their watches, it's pretty dang cool, and they were giving them away, it was it was really cool. Uh, we make gear and apparel for capable people, whether 
on your toughest excursions or in your everyday adventures. Okay, I'll check that out when I'm at the show. There, awesome. These are very cool, LA, LA based. Um, let's check them out real quick. So I think they do pretty dang affordable watches. Yeah, so they do some USA Quartz watches and they have some USA Auto watches for pretty dang affordable. Like for example, this one says it's USA Auto and it's only 629. So what movement is that? That is a USA Automatic. What is this? That's a Miyota. So it must just be USA Assembled. I thought they were saying it was a USA Automatic movement. It is not a USA Automatic. I think they just assemble these watches in the USA. So there's Vare, Vanna Vero. Uh, huge fan of Vero. If you have not checked out one of these, check it out. I have one of the funky um, workhorse chronographs, but they have open water automatics, which I'm hoping to get one of those on the show. But these chronographs are beast of a watch. It wears about the size of a Seiko Tuna. Um, but look at the colorways. They're just, they're awesome. And they're 425. It's a, it's a quartz watch, but um, they're still just, I, I still think they're worth the 425 because they actually, some of the parts they actually make in the United States uh, I think the cases are made in the United States and a few other things. And then they Cerakote them, right? They're not DLC. They're Cerakoted like you'd see like usually like you'd see like on a firearm or something. Um, and I think that's really cool. So it's something a little bit different that I don't think a lot of other brands are doing. So, um, yeah, you can check that one out. I don't, that one's not interesting to me. Vortec, uh, these guys are great. They're doing some amazing things. They're taking a lot of USA um, pocket watches, upcycling them into USA produced cases, straps, all that stuff. Very cool innovation with that, uh, getting those back out to, in working condition and rebuilt. And I know for a fact that they've been working on developing a, like a field watch that's going to be made in the USA. I think that's about all I can say on that. William Wood's going to be there. I have a couple of William Wood watches. They're out of the, uh, you know, in the, Brit the UK and with a heavy tie to the firefighter industry. And, and even their straps actually have some, uh, again, upcycled fire hose embedded into the silicon strap. Very cool. Wind Vintage. That's a Rolex. Uh, Wal Walbrook, I know Tennessee Mike just had one of these uh, and sold it. I think he liked it, but they must be crazy affordable or something because he sold it pretty dang cheap. 40 millimeter. Let's just click on this one. I want to look at it. Skin Diver. It looks awesome. Kind of, um, what watch is that? Is that kind of like the, the GO, I think, look to it or something? Uh, it looks pretty legit. It looks like a nice solid watch. How much are these? 150 meters, so it's a skin diver. Miyota movement. It's the 8000 series, but it probably still hacks. Dual color loom. Oh, God. Mark, that is so cool. RJ, who is one of the owners of, of Vortec, is is in the process of writing a book about being sued by Swatch, according to his YouTube. That's awesome. He does have a, a good YouTube channel. It really doesn't get the views that it should. I wish it would. Maybe I'll, I'll start having on these lives. Let me know if you guys are interested in this. I could start having some of these guys on the live show if you want. Like, I could probably get him over here. I could get, you know, some more guests onto the live show if it's something you guys are interested in. These are only 450 bucks. Why do I not have one of these? I, I need to read. I got to talk to these guys. I need to talk to these guys at the show. Um, that seems like a pretty sweet watch for that price point. And then, of course, Zodiac. Um, Michael Pearson. Uh, I talk to him on a regular basis. He's kind of like the main, you know, 
person you're going to talk to if you go to one of these shows and you see uh, Zodiac. He's awesome. I'll actually have him on the show too. So maybe I'll do that. I'll start doing that on future lives for a little bit. Maybe I'll see if I can get a guest. And then we can just ask them questions. They don't have to be on the show for the whole time. We They can just pop in or something. Because um, I know sometimes they, you know, an hour long conversation with somebody can be rough. Even with Mark, it was it was awesome for Mark to be here. But like, you know, he just worked all day. He probably gets up super early. He probably just worked all day. He's at home. You know, he's trying to wind down and uh, and then, you know, have to engage at this level. It's like, eh, it's a bit much. So let's look, we're going to do the best for last. I'm biased because Mark paying for my trip, but okay. So I'm just kidding guys. So let's look at Islander watch this and we got a lot of pop-ups, but I forgot. I meant to talk to him about this and I'll, I'll ask him when at the show and maybe I'll talk about this in the future, but there's the, he's got like a rewards club thing too going now where I think you earn points as you buy Islander watches. Uh, again, just going crazier. So he's got all these new Mecha Quartz. I've yet to handle legit most of these. When you have 200 SKUs, I'm not going to be able to handle them all. Um, but chronographs are cool. None of these personally like draw me in just from looking at them, but maybe looking at them in person might be different. These uh, port, the port series watch now, I am drawn to this one, but uh, this colorway right here, which my buddy Greg, who was in the chat earlier, has this watch. I know there's going to be people out there that love that colorway, people out there that hate that colorway, but like I am drawn to that colorway like you would not believe. Like I have to have this watch. That thing is perfect looking to me. I love it. So that's one of those ones, as soon as I see it, I'm just like, yeah, 100% in. I want that watch. So that watch is going to happen. It's probably, I mean, look at that. That is freaking awesome. Yeah, I'm definitely getting that one. So uh, let's back back up. So, and then there's, you know, some, there's like a coral peachy looking one. Oh, more conservative looking one there and then you get into the blues mark's going to do a ton of blue watches that's like his favorite color for a watch you know some of that's going to have some personal um input on it i did own this islander sands point in titanium and blue for a little while i sold that and then i did have the gmt um there's God, there, there, there can't be too many of these left this watch right here the Re Republic, it's a Swiss automatic, so it has the Salida in it. It's only six ninety five. When he first launched this, I think this was a thousand ninety five. He lowered it to eight ninety five. Now it's down to six ninety five. That is uh, a, a really good deal, I think, for a Salida based movement. And he he did a great job on that watch. This color looks really cool. I like this on the Brookfield. That's a very cool color, actually. I could see my wife wanting that watch. I should probably show Islander watch to my wife. So maybe she would stop bugging me for a Breitling and maybe she would just buy some Islander watches, like some cool colors like that. Cause I can afford to buy a few of those for her. Yeah. Pistachio dial. I don't know that I can swing, you know, uh, a $15,000 Breitling that she wants. Maybe I think my wife would like this one. I might have to pick this one up for the wife. I'm thinking she was, she would dig that colorway. Okay, let's go back to where we were. There's like a, a Seiko Monster looking one with the uh, abalone dial. That's pretty wild looking. And each dial is going to be different too on that. God, there's so many of these watches. That's a full loom dial on that one with the titanium. This orange looks really good he does pretty good job of the pictures i know it's again it's difficult to do but these watches are going to look even more um vivid and bold in person so dane thanks for the warning uh, i'm definitely going to run over for one 
I'm looking at the Islander watches. I've personally, I've never looked at Islander watches systematically like this. I'm going to run through them real quick. You know, if you guys are done, you're done, whatever you can tune out. Um, also, there's still a little bit of whiskey left in my glass. So when the whiskey's gone, maybe I'll uh... remember when you were kids and you were trying to get your parents to leave. You're like, I'm tired. Let's go. Let's go. And they're like, all right. Yeah. After this drink or whatever. Well, hold on after this drink, then we'll leave. Um, let's see here. Of course, you have like the SKX style cases, but in a 38 millimeter. So that's going to appease a lot of people that prefer the smaller watches, typically based on your wrist size. He, you can just see what he's doing here. It's like he's covering all the bases. He's doing the bold colors that people like. He's doing the case sizes that people like. And then just, this is an insane amount of watches. Like, I didn't even know some of these were in his lineup. And I'm sure over time, he's going to be discontinuing them there. Right there. I mean, that watch is like Gen 1, so like SKX 781 or something. Uh, you know, it's a homage to the original Monster because it's discontinued. I'm assuming this is full loom. There's like a teal colored one. And you can kind of tell, too, for the most part, a lot of his watches, he's starting to kind of create his own his own little vibe to him instead of being like similar to like mod cases or homage cases he's starting to do because these are like older skews so you can see like this is a similar to like a samurai case um and these newer watches they don't they look like they're their own thing so that's uh that's pretty cool the evolution of islander watch oh i meant to even tell him i forgot so the one Islander watch I have, this is a smaller version of the one I have. This is the ISL 127. I have the, I don't, I don't know where it's going to be at. I have the larger version of it, this one. Um, I'll blow up the screen and show you in a second. But there's some subtle details on it, and I showed it in my video when I video reviewed it, that I really like that you don't see in the pictures. You have to, like, own it and really look at it and study it to be able to see the subtle detail that I'm going to, I don't think I'll be able to show you on the webcam either, but. So you can see some of these older ones, you know, they're very Seiko-ish looking. Here's that, um, the Urban Gentry Range Master one. These sell out so fast. All of these say out of stock. Um, and I know they're going to do another release, another generation of those. Yeah, these all say out of stock. So as they go out of stock, will he reproduce them? Like even this one. So this is the one I have and that I'll never sell. I absolutely love this watch. And again, this this photo, this is not what the watch looks like. I mean, that looks like a dehydrate. Um, that looks like a golden yellow. And then you can kind of see it in here, but see how the indices? The indices are actually framed in red. And it ties in perfectly with the Islander red, the red second hand, and then the red on the Pepsi bezel. But it is not that golden. It's much more pale looking versus that. So let me um, let me go back to this. So you can kind of see here, this is a more uh, real life color of it. It's, it's not as golden as what it looked like, right? So you can kind of see that. So um, yeah, 100%. I like that one. And it says it's sold out. And he sold that one towards the end for $2.99. This thing brand new from Islander Watch before he sold out was only $300. That is insane. This thing is awesome. It runs great. I think it looks amazing. Um, it's... Yeah, even the even the ones that Seiko did, because Seiko did one similar to this. This was like an enthusiast developed colorway that Seiko did, but it was in the 5KX case. I like that one too. Actually, my buddy, uh, John Page, who was in the chat earlier, I think he has one. I'm pretty sure he does. Those are limited edition, very cool, hard to get. Um, it has a similar vibe, but I like the three o'clock crown on this one. It's screw down. It actually has water resistance and all that stuff. So... I really like this watch. I'm very happy to own it. And I did get this off a, a buddy of mine 
back in the day. So, all right, let's uh, read some comments. It looks like we have a 20 minute warning. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Steve says he needs to buy some watches. You are correct, sir. I think you should buy some watches. Um, oh, okay. So you can filter on it for in stock. Uh, let's see the Detroit Mint. Let's see. The Detroit Mint version is great too. Answer Chrono. Um, I think that one is being sent back to me. Um, actually, after the live stream, Dane, I'm going to probably drop a few more tours. I noticed some of the tours had ended and I got more boxes back here. I think I got like two or three tour watches back. So I'll probably drop a few, uh, at least one more tour at the uh, end of this live stream. I'll do that on my private Discord. Uh, let's see here. Underachieving watch collector says, come on, Ralph Happy. He was referring to me buying that watch. Yeah, there's, yeah, she gets whatever she wants. So don't worry there. All right, guys, any last minute questions before I chime out? This glass is almost empty. It would have been empty a long time ago. And this is the last that I have in the liquor cabinet. And I'm not buying any more. So like Mark said, he hasn't, he never really drinks. And uh, a few people said they've been sober for a long time. Um, Brendan says, check out the new RZE Endeavor Glacier Dials. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that because I'm actually a huge, ooh, I didn't even know they were doing that. All right, uh, let me let me share my screen. Let's go to RZE and Endeavor. Is it is it these ones? I guess that's not the glacier dial, is it? Yeah. They're all on pre-order. I love the medallion yellow colorway. So he released some new dials. It looks like he released new dials. Yeah, if you haven't had a ch chance to um, check out the RZE lineups, uh, incredible value. It's, uh, evidently, when you get them on pre-order, definitely it's 500 bucks. Pretty hard to beat that. Um, so it looks like they added this white, which is not, I don't think it's a full loom. No, it's not. But he usually does two color loom application. What color is my, where is my RZ? I don't even know where any of my watches are. I got watches piled all over. I did buy a couple of Ikea cabinets, the Alex drawer systems. And uh, I'm going to be building those soon. And I'll, I'll do a video of it and show all of it. He's saying the RZE just added the fly adjustment to. Uh, so I think I have, I think I have this watch is what I have. Somewhere. I don't know where. Um, so where is the. What are you talking about on the bracelet? Where is it adjust? Hmm. I was I was trying to see if I could find where it adjusted. So they have on the fly adjustment on the bracelets now. Do they have a video or something of it? Hey, there's my logo. That's pretty cool. All right. Let's see. What else we got? They made a yellow Zelos. Good luck finding one. Um, I was trying to get Elshin to do a collaboration with me on an orange watch because he doesn't really care for orange, I guess. So he was like, yeah, you can do an orange dial one. So, um, yeah. So originally I was planning on doing a collab with Elshin and Zelos with an orange dial watch. And then we just kind of stopped communicating. So 
Uh, maybe one day. I don't want to do too much, you know, because I've already done a couple with Borealis, and I'm slowly in the in the works with uh, Notice on a, a limited edition run. So we'll we'll see how it goes. Let's see. JJ's checking in from Michigan. Best site to sell your watch. Best site is going to be eBay, as bad as that is. Uh, maybe Reddit or um, Watch You Seek. No. Yeah, is it Watch You Seek? I don't know. One of those. I I always sell them on my channel. I mean, depending on what you have, you could potentially send it to me. But we'll see. Yeah, like Dane said, it depends on the watch. Just yeah, there's a lot of variables in that. Dane says, watch you seek or Chrono 24. But I think the issue with both of those is you have to do a bunch of stuff to qualify for even posting stuff for sale. Um, let's see. Someone buy my retrospect so I can buy a new retrospect. Yeah, you're going to take a big hit on that. But you got to remember, too, the retrospects are only like four something. So when you go to sell that, the older used retrospect, depending on what colorway it is, you're probably only going to get like 175 maybe, depending on the condition, if it runs good. That's that's the reality of things. Floridian saying, thinking about an Oris, we'll check out Nick. Floridian, when you go there, don't go in thinking you're looking for something specifically. Go into Exquisite with an open mind. Um, and if you and if you're on a budget, right, sure, check out the the when you're walking in from the main parking lot, go into the main building on your left, sure. There'll probably be even a little dog there to greet you. He's really cool, he's fine. Um, but um that's where all like the new really cool stuff is, right? Go look at that, but it's a lot of expensive stuff. But if you go out of that store and go over to the store to the right of it, that's where they keep a lot of their used watches. They also carry some other brand new brands in there for less money, like a Unimatic and stuff like that. But go in there with an open mind. Don't get hyper-focused on Oris. Go in there and look at everything. You know what I mean? And and talk to Nick and just and, and check it out because you'd be surprised. You might get drawn into something else. Yeah, like Dane said. Next door is all the previously owned stuff. And then there's even more stuff. If you start talking to Nick and you you take a little deeper dive, they have even more stuff that's not even out on display. So if he has the time to spend with you, which he will, because you just make him do it, then uh, you can you can you can find something that'll work for you, I'm sure. Uh, James also says exquisite also takes trade-ins that help soften the blow. 100% they do for sure. Oh my goodness. Yes. Dane, exquisite timepieces. That's a good description is the Disney world for us watch guys. It's sensory overload. It is like, it is ridiculous. Um, you can hang out there for hours. Like I used to do that at a gun, like a couple of gun shop, shops that I used to hang out with back in the day when I was in the firearms more. Um, I would hang out there for hours. And just shoot the shit with people and check out firearms and uh, just talk shop and everything like that. I I don't know if watch stores are open to that type of um, hanging out. But, yeah, like, yeah, because yeah, I'm not a buyer, but, like, it's different for me because, like, you know, I work with them and, you know, they know that I'm looking at them as a, in a different light. I'm looking at them as as content and stuff like that but yeah you can hang out for hours and hours and just look at so many watches and just talk shop and stuff dane says we did hang out there for hours you are right you are right oh yeah 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 dr bobs he just just discovered the topper website and used department they're right across the bay too yeah and they just built a new store and moved into it i haven't been in there yet uh, but again a great option and then i think it's i don't know if it's every once a week or once a month they release new used watches that are like incredible good deals. I bought a couple watches off them. Um, very, very cool. Very cool. So 
All right, guys, I'm going to, I'm going to close this out. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate it. If you're in the Bay area in a couple of weeks, definitely hit me up. Mark said, here we go. Every Friday they post the new stuff on top. I know Mark, you probably don't want to disclose that because now you're going to be fighting for the same deals, but um, and, and toppers is another good one where you, if you develop, develop with most authorized deals, it, if you develop a relationship with a particular salesperson, they're going to go to bat for you. So when they get something in, they, they think you might be interested in, they will contact you. They will text you or call you and say like, hey, I got this in. Are you interested in it? It's very cool. It's very cool if you develop that kind of relationship with an authorized dealer, salesperson. So. Um, yes, Paul, I will be safe in California because, uh, I'm going to circle the wagons. I'm going to have all the people that are hanging out with me. I'm just going to have them circle around me. So like, I'll be fully protected. It'll be like, a, um, yeah, a shield or something. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next video. Wait, we got to finish the drink. I'm out.